So you're thinking about doing the game Prodigy. Hmm. You've looked at it. You've seen that cute little blue character with the one tooth. I swear that thing had a tooth. That goblin. Ah, there it is. And you've seen that 50 million users use it. But is it good enough? What does common sense say? Ooh, four out of five. That's pretty good. But do parents love it? Do kids love it? Do teachers love it? Let's find out right now. All right, so you're into Prodigy, Mr. Armstrong. This is mine. Now I'm going to go through it as if I'm a student. So they can sign in with Google. You set up their account for them. And you get a class code. So as a student, they just push sign in. Okay, and they're going to update their character. They put their class code here. That's what, as a teacher, you give them. Okay, I already have that set up. Um, I use, as a teacher, I use this to play against students, and they love being able to battle their teacher and answer math questions. Are you playing from home or from school? Since we're in the digital era here and um, with what's happening in the world right now, a lot of my students are at home. And I can give them assignments right from here. So that's pretty cool. Um, I can tell them the level I'm going to. So let's go to Cloud Puff. I have not been to this world. This tells them how many students are on in that world. You can even go to more worlds and check it out. I believe the more red they are, the more full they are. Okay. Are you playing from home? So let's go back. I'm going from home. I'm going to go Cloud Puff. Let's try that one out. Okay, I'm going to turn down the volume here. And it has a bunch of things here. You can explore this world. This is me going around. And all I'm doing is clicking. And kids find it cool that they can journey around this world and find other classmates to battle. Here are my friends, my classmates. These are other kids, actually my students, who are playing this. Right, They're not playing it right now, but if they were on, I could uh, challenge them to a battle. And they find that really fun to go to, hey, Rob, let's go to this world and play each other. Okay, there's different maps that they can go to. There's different stuff they collect. They can check their backpack. They can... Um, equip themselves with all these things they've gained from answering math questions. So there's a real um, quality to Prodigy about that. Kids love being able to get rewarded with stuff. So they're answering those math questions. It doesn't quite feel like work to them. They're, they're earning coins. They're earning boots. They're earning pets, which is really cool. They love that. My pet is this thing. I'm not quite... There we go. I couldn't figure that out for some reason. I was doing it weird. This is your pets. You're gaining. They're getting rewarded with cool pets. They love that. They love saying to me, Mr. Armstrong, look at the cool pet I got. And I'm like, that's awesome, man. See Super Mia right here. I could pretend she's in my class. I can push battle. Now... Super Mia has been playing a long time, so Super Mia is at level 57, I'm at level 13. If she were to play me, oh no, she's playing me. She's going to destroy me. Let's see if I can do this really quick. I know that the higher level the kid is, the more they're going to get you, and I don't mind that. 98, let's go with... What, 54? No. 44. 88. No. Quick math. And uh, I should show these. These are quick. Improvise something. Tools right here. So let's say 50. That would not work. That'd be 100. But I could show them like this. I could go 49 plus 49. Add it up. Common core way we do it is like this. So they know those two numbers equal 98. Then they click off. There's other cool tools they can use. They can use manipulatives up here. 
all sorts of cool manipulatives. I'll do this really quick. Cast a spell. Sorry, Mia, you're waiting for me. Okay, and I'm pretty sure Mia's going to destroy me in one hit. Yeah, if your levels are way apart, then you get destroyed. If I get a little, little tiny hit on her, look at the cool pet she earns. This is what I mean. She's not even a premium member. She's got those pets. Okay, so that's cool that I got destroyed. Oh, do I need to switch my pet? Oh, poor, poor Snow Fluff. Sorry, Snow Fluff. Is 31 even or odd? So my students are working on even and odd. So as a teacher, I'm going to talk as a teacher now. You can set the assignments, and it's got standards. So you're getting those data points. All those data points that you need to CYA are there for you. You can set assignments that match your curriculum. And you're going to see what students need to work on what. So if some student is struggling on even and odd, I can pull them into a small group and work with them on even or odd. Now in the digital learning, I would probably pull them into a Google Meet or a Zoom, talk with that student about even or odd, um, show different methods, different strategies to use. So that's why it's really cool. Prodigy covers you that way. After Mia destroys me here, I'll show you that. There we go. Oh my god, minus 2,463 damage. And the pets do not die, okay? They run away. So for parents, this is not something where you're going to be viewing it as something that kids should not be playing like Fortnite or uh, Call of Duty. I have students that play that in second grade and I'm like... So this is not that. This is very educational. And it does not have to cost anything. You can play this completely free. Now let me see. I wanted to show you as a teacher. So let me get out of here and let me go to my page. I'm going to go to Prodigy. Video game. Okay, and I'm going to log in as a teacher now. I don't want to play Prodigy. I want to log into Prodigy. You see here? Prodigy login. Okay, so I'm all set up with Google. So I'm going to log in with Google. And it should choose my school account. Okay, so this is Prodigy Game from my school. So as a student, could not praise it enough. So as a teacher, let's see here. Okay, so my kids are working on this right now. It says which students have answered what. It does a placement test at the beginning to see how they're doing or where they should be at their weekly skills, what they're working on. And what I wanted to show you with was the reports. You can view reports like this. Who's working below grade level? Who's working on what grade level? I just started them off due to the um, social distancing and digital learning. So they're exploring this website right now, but I have used it in past. So I'm going to do an assessment. I'm going to create a little assignment. So you can plan align them to a standard. Let's do that. I'm going to search even or odd and look at that. It comes up right there. I already selected selected the grade level, but you could select one through eight, I believe. Yeah, eighth grade, this goes up to. So click that, click next. I'm gonna call this even slash odd, and we'll call this number two because I already did it. You select the start date. Today's the 26th, let's, oh, let's do another one. So maybe they wanna play over the weekend and do a little practicing. You create it, 
you can adjust the date range, but they're going to approximately do 10 minutes a day of just those questions. So they're getting the repetition there as well. Okay, and that assignment is done. And those students are going to be working on that assignment. So how cool is that? As a parent, you can give, the teacher can give you the email of the student and they can watch the progress as well. Okay, so as a parent, I would love Prodigy. Okay, some of the downfalls. There are a few, but they're so minute as to not be a big problem at all. The one thing is you're going to get treasure chests as a player in this game. There's going to be this beautiful treasure over here and just a normal treasure chest over here. The kids want to click the beautiful treasure because that's a membership treasure and they're always going to click it and it's going to try and get them to pay money. Now I have had one student in the past who paid membership, loved it, even got a toy because they paid for the membership and they get, definitely get more stars. They get more stuff. They get cooler pets. Okay. So if you have the money, by all means do it. It's, it's a cool membership, but totally not necessary, not necess necessary at all. You can play this totally free. Just click the normal average treasure chest and you're going to get stars. You're going to get cool stuff, but you probably won't be able to keep up with the people with the memberships. Okay, that's one downside. The other thing is you may be as a teacher teaching how to do a particular assignment or lesson and the way Prodigy teaches it is totally different from your method. Now, that can be viewed as a negative because you've taught it a different way, but it could also be a positive in that they're getting more strategies. Maybe one of the strategies fits better with their style of learning. So think about it that way. You're like, oh, my God, I haven't taught this way, but it could help a student that might be struggling. OK, so it's all on how you view it. Um, I think that's all for Prodigy. So in my book. I, I love Prodigy. It's, it's one of the best tech tools out there. Something that you can give a kid after they've completed their work and it feels like a game, but in actuality, they're actually learning quite a bit. Okay. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I've um, put a lot of work into this channel and I hope you like the content. Remember to subscribe below. Have a great day. Bye.